And here's your prescription. I know just the pharmacy to get this filled. Who are you? A pharmacy benefit manager. A middleman your insurer uses to decide which medicines you can get, what you pay, and sometimes even which pharmacy you should go to. Why can't I go to a pharmacy in my neighborhood? Because I make more money when you go to a pharmacy I own. <laughs> no one should stand between you and your medicine. Visit phrma.org slash middleman to learn more. Paid for by Pharma. Apple Card is the credit card created by Apple. You earn 3% daily cash back up front when you use it to buy a new iPhone 15, AirPods, or any products at Apple. And you can automatically grow your daily cash at 4.15% annual percentage yield when you open a high-yield savings account. Apply for Apple Card in the Wallet app on iPhone. Apple Card subject to credit approval. Savings is available to Apple Card owners subject to eligibility. Savings accounts by Goldman Sachs Bank USA member FDIC. Terms apply. This is Optimal Finance Daily, episode 2550, How to Live Rent and Mortgage Free, by Christina Browning of OurRichJourney.com. And I'm your host and personal finance enthusiast, Diana Merriam. Now let's get right to it and continue optimizing your life. How to Live Rent and Mortgage Free, by Christina Browning of OurRichJourney.com. I've seen financial gurus that cite, as a general rule, you should spend no more than 30% of your average gross income on housing. Wait, what? Seriously? How on earth can anyone achieve FIRE if 30% of their gross income is spent on housing? Before you point to technicalities, let me cut you off. I understand that the recommendation is no more than 30%. I also understand that when most people are directed that they can splurge up to a certain amount on something, they tend to go all out. I mean, as a kid, if my mom told me that I could go to the grocery store and spend no more than $5 on snacks, I certainly wasn't coming home with a 50 cent sack. So here's my link between candy and housing. When most people are told to spend no more than a certain amount on something, in most cases, they spend that maximum amount. But if you're interested in fire, you can't behave like most people. Think outside the box for housing. What I encourage you to do when it comes to housing is to think outside the box. Don't accept that you can spend 30% of your income on housing. Think differently. Consider what would happen if you told yourself that you should spend no more than 10% of your income on housing. What if you even adopted the crazy idea that you should spend nothing at all on housing? Well, that's exactly what Aman and I did on our journey to fire. We got creative. We began to think of ways to live rent and mortgage free, and we did just that. In fact, we came up with ways to live rent and mortgage free before we even started our fire journey. For more than 10 years, we implemented five completely different strategies that allowed us to live rent and mortgage free, and we lived in beautiful homes. Want to know how we did it? Here are the five ways that we lived rent and mortgage free. Number one, resident advisors. Being a resident advisor is a great way to get your housing paid for while you're in college. But you don't have to be a young college student to be a resident advisor. Aman and I lived in UCLA's graduate school housing when I was in law school at the age of 32. Aman was the only one working at the time and we needed to save money. So we became resident advisors. In exchange for getting free rent and an additional monthly stipend, we were only required to be on call eight weeks out of the year. Only eight weeks. Don't get me wrong, we got some interesting 2 a.m. phone calls during those eight weeks, but it was definitely worth it. If you're not a student and don't qualify to be a resident advisor, try applying to be a resident manager of an apartment complex. Same concept, you just don't have to be a student to qualify. Number two, renting out empty rooms. Have an empty room lying around in your house? If so, get a roommate to pay your rent. Shortly after graduating, Aman and I purchased a lease option on a three-bedroom condo, but it was just the two of us and we had two spare rooms. We knew exactly what we wanted to do with those spare rooms, make money by renting them out. Clearly, the con to this is that you have to share your space with strangers. Who wants to share a place with a wackadoodle? Fortunately, we ended up with great roommates. One thing that helped was that we listed the rooms at slightly below going rates. By doing this, we got tons of applicants, which meant plenty of roomies to choose from. 
The two roommates we selected ended up paying for our entire monthly lease option, allowing us to live rent-free. And when we ultimately moved, we sold our lease option for a great profit. Number three, strategically downsize. Notice how I didn't just say downsize. You've gotta be strategic about it. Let's face it, most of us live in a house that's too big. Sure, downsizing will likely decrease your rent, but there's also a way to decrease your rent and live rent-free. Here's how we did it. Obviously, we downsized, but rather than getting rid of our larger home, we kept it and rented it out at a rate that paid for us to live in a smaller home while also paying the mortgage on the larger home. We put our larger home on Airbnb and Verbo, which allowed us to collect a much higher rental income on a nightly basis compared to the rent we could have collected from a long-term renter. This option worked for us because we got to downsize and embrace a minimalist lifestyle while also living rent and mortgage free. Number four, granny flats. Not to beat a dead horse with the Airbnb Verbo concept, but this fourth rent and mortgage free technique also involved Airbnb and Verbo, just in another way. Under this method, we actually didn't own a house. Instead, we rented a house and still lived rent free. We did this by essentially renting two homes at the same time, a main home with a detached granny flat in the backyard. We lived in the main home and rented out the granny flat on Airbnb and Verbo. This was a great option for us because we got to profit from real estate without actually owning the real estate, investing in the real estate, or maintaining the real estate. Of course, if you use this technique for living rent-free, you must get approval from your landlord before you do it. And number five, employer-paid housing. And our final way for living rent and mortgage-free was through our employer. When we lived in Spain and Japan, we worked for the federal government and the US government paid 100% of our rent and utilities while we lived and worked abroad. What many people don't know about the federal government is that many times they offer free rent and utilities to employees that work abroad in places like Spain, Germany, Italy, Japan, Singapore, all over the world. But it's not just the federal government. Many corporations also offer free housing to employees willing to move and work abroad. It's basically an incentive that employers use to encourage employees to work abroad. Of course, the incentive worked for us. We worked abroad and lived rent and mortgage free, which allowed us to save and invest a ton of money. And as the saying goes, the rest is history. You just listened to the post titled How to Live Rent and Mortgage Free by Christina Browning of OurRichJourney.com. Labor strikes, climate change, your beat up office printer. What do they all have in common? Come on, it's all about the money. Economics is everywhere and everything fueling our lives, even where we least expect it. If you're a fan of Optimal Finance Daily and are curious to learn something new and exciting about economics every week, I recommend you listen to the Planet Money podcast from NPR. Planet Money is a different kind of world where the complex economy actually makes sense, where human stories supersede abstract theories. For example, credit scores may sound complex, but Planet Money can give you simple tips so that you can make better financial decisions. And Planet Money also answers some of life's burning questions, like, will AI take over our jobs? And why are Christmas trees so darn expensive? The Planet Money team lives to tell a good story in around 30 minutes. It's econ for the rest of us. Tune in to Planet Money every week for entertaining stories and insights about how money shapes our world stories that can't be found anywhere else. Listen now to Planet Money from NPR, wherever you get your podcasts. And here's your prescription. I know just the pharmacy to get this filled. Who are you? A pharmacy benefit manager. A middleman your insurer uses to decide which medicines you can get, what you pay, and sometimes even which pharmacy you should go to. Why can't I go to a pharmacy in my neighborhood? Because I make more money when you go to a pharmacy I own. (laughs) No one should stand between you and your medicine. Visit phrma.org slash middleman to learn more. Paid for by Pharma. Housing is most people's largest expense, so it makes sense to get creative here if you really want to make a big dent in reducing your expenses. I'm a huge fan of house hacking, and I've seen it done in a lot of different ways. 
When I first bought my house, I had a roommate who covered 90% of my mortgage while still paying well below market rate for rent. It worked out this way because I bought a house well below my means with a mortgage payment of only $600 per month. So it was really a win-win for both of us. In addition to the help on the mortgage, I also had someone to help with my dog when I traveled. Along that same vein, I have a friend with two spare bedrooms in her house, and she rents these out fully furnished to travel nurses. What's nice about this is that it's a temporary arrangement. Living with a stranger can be risky from a quality of life perspective, because it's impossible to know before getting into it if you're really gonna get along. But with a three-month time frame, even if you're not a fan of your new roommate, you can likely tolerate it for such a short period of time. And that should do it for today. Have a happy rest of your day. And I'll see you on the Thursday show tomorrow where your optimal life awaits.